voice incomes, they, they feel a, a, a 3% higher rate of inflation compared to those on higher incomes. So, because you're on a low income, you spend more of your, your money on food, on utilities, on fuel, the cost of living crisis is going to impact you more. And Burnley, sadly, has some of the highest concentrations of deprivation in Lancashire. And that's why we've been particularly badly affected by the cost of living crisis. In addition to that, Burnley is one of the worst affected areas for unsecured debt and high debt to income ratios. So compared to the national average in Burnley, our rate of unsecured debt, so households with over £5,000 of unsecured debt, is double the national average. And only Blackpool and Highland come close to Burnley. So what have we done to try and address this in Burnley? Well, with only one exception, everything we have done has been in partnership with the voluntary community and faith sector. So that one exception was the council took the decision to increase the rate of council tax subsidy for those on the lowest incomes to 100% for this year, so they won't pay any council tax. So what have we done in partnership? I've got a whole list, and I think uh, my colleague from Pendle Council, Jill, might talk about some of these things in a bit more detail, so I won't dwell on them, but we, uh, with the sector, opened uh, 30 warm spaces where anybody could go and, and keep warm, get a cup of tea, have a, a chat. Um, they're all based in the community during winter. We had a referral process into our home energy efficiency improvement team from the launch community and data sector. So uh, helping people with central heating, with um, energy efficiency packs. We've issued hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of food and fuel vouchers in partnership with the CBS. We run a holiday activity and food program to try and get kids active during the summer holidays and to give them something to eat, try and deal with holiday hunger. Um, free uh, to kids from families on low incomes. Again, all those providers are from uh, the voluntary community and faith sector. There's more detail on all these programs in the leaflet, which I, I think I left a, a few copies at the back, so please feel free to pick one up and, and have a look at all the things we've, we've done. Um, so what I'd like to say uh, in a, a bit more detail is about one of our key partnerships called Burnley Together. So Burnley Together started during the pandemic. It was a, a service there to help people who were clinically or socially vulnerable um, to help them self-isolate. And again, it's a partnership with the, with the sector to make sure people have access to the medicines, they've got the dog wart, they've got food. Um, and when the cost of living crisis came along, in Birmingham, we said we're going to keep that partnership going in response to this new crisis. Um, one of the key projects within Birmingham uh, together is, is the community grocery. Um, and that's the key project for us in trying to do something to reduce food insecurity. So the community grocery, if you've not uh, come across it before, is it's run by an organisation, a faith organisation called the Message Trust. And the reason it's so strong is because of its volunteer base. Um, so uh, the Life Church in Burnley uh, provides volunteers, but the membership of the community grocery also form part of its volunteer base. And we now have two in Burnley. We're very fortunate. Um, so how is this helping with the cost of living crisis? Well, first of all, it's reducing dependency on our food bank. Um, and secondly, anybody can use a community grocery. Um, so if you're a customer, you, or to become a member of the grocery, you pay a £5 annual fee. And then anybody can uh, spend just £4 on a shop with a value, if you've gone to Tesco's or wherever, of about £20. And you can do three of those shops a week. So now we have these two groceries in Burnley. My back of a five packet calculation is that within a, 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 a year's time, I reckon we'll be saving the users of that grocery about a million pounds a year in grocery uh, uh, savings. This is massive. Um, 
Third advantage of the community grocery is that there's far less stigma associated with it compared with using a, a food bank. And, and alongside the food bank, in the same uh, shop, uh, we have a uniform shop, um, recycled school uniform. Um, and we're about to open a, te a teaching kitchen. So uh, members will be able to uh, buy the groceries and then learn how to cook it and cook something uh, with fresh ingredients and, and something healthy. Um, so it's not just the first things that you see when you walk into the community grocery, which is the shop and the uniform shop and the teaching kitchen. We also have services behind the scenes. And, uh, and one of the big advantages of this approach is, is the conversations that people have with the volunteers, with people with lived experience. So they come in, residents come into the uh, grocery thinking, I'm just here uh, to do a shop. But then they get talking to somebody about why they're really here. And it might be that they need some, some money advice, some debt advice. And so we're able, through that partnership, to signpost people into uh, Citizens Advice Bureau or into um, uh, debt services provided by Christians Against Poverty, for example. So for me, uh, the business case for the community grocery is very, very straightforward. It's, it's helping people save, it's helping vulnerable residents engage more easily with a whole range of services uh, because of that friendly front door. Um, but the big challenge for us is going to be sustaining it going forward. Uh, and so over the next 12 months we'll be looking for more investment from partners, but uh, I'm sure it's going to go from strength to strength. Um, so I hope that's been a useful introduction to uh, one of the key interventions that we have in Burnley. Uh, I'm more than happy for us to take any questions now. Or, uh, we've got the chair of the Burnley Together Steering Group, uh, Councillor Maggie Lishman, here as well. So Maggie knows all about all these things as well. So catch either one of us uh, in the networking sessions and we'll be more than happy for us to, to say a little bit more. But thanks very much for your time. I hope that's been useful.